The Mystery of Lust In the dark of deep night, I want to have her, to own her body, to possess it. I want to become engorged, to penetrate every orifice. I want, I used to suspect, to sin. I need to dominate, to control, to satisfy any sexual hunger. I don't always want romance or to be gentle, or tender, or slow, or careful. What is the most worst is this hunger, this lust, this near unfathomable need includes wanting her to give in to me completely of her own free will. I need her surrender, her submission, her yin to my yang. Yet this is not about debasement. How can lust debase what is freely given? Nor is it about power. I want no power over her at all, for I too want to surrender, to give in to the lust, to embrace the untempered hunger, yet not be there in that dark-seeming place of raw lust alone. I want, need, her company in the dark deeps of the night when the hunger is aroused, not only that I want her to urge me on, not only I do I want her to urge me on, take me, she must say, have me, she must say, possess me, own me. She is to open to me, to spread her arms and her legs and lay back and tell me to penetrate her, devour her. My hungry mouth is wanted everywhere or she turns herself over and demands I go into her from behind. The lust must burn through both of us, taking away all inhibitions, all resistance, for in this, burst, this burning the lust is pure some way. How can that be? A primal power of the creation is appearing, a need for uniting that overcomes all reluctance, where the resisting mind fades away and the body itself surrenders to all sensation, both inner and outer, to all urgent demand to plant the seed within her, to plow her and plunder her and shower her, nor is this a gesture of animalness. This is an urge for pure generation, for combining egg and seed, electric and magnetic and atomic is this desire, this lust, this hunger. This is not sin in fact but something holy something divine we are making something together we are making a new body a new avatar for a new person to inhabit for the fire of lust comes from outside us from the spirit of the child who wants and needs a physical body in which to be born there are three of us here now we too, male and female, past and present, make a beginning place, a first iteration of a house meant to become a temple for the mystery of the future other. The one who can't come from their star and descend into incarnation until we surrender to its lust for earthly life that flows over and around us, penetrating us. This other hunger wants to have us, to own us, to possess us, it needs us to submit to he, she, it. The gate into physical life is through lust, through the overriding, all-consuming hunger of the spirit to be in flesh. Even the gods knew this, for the poet sang, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Is not each child to be born its own spirit word? No wonder St. Paul filled the, feared the power of the hunger, the freedom of the physical earthly body to surrender to the non-earthly spirit, to submit to the needs of the body, seemed to him to give up his power and freedom, not realizing that nothing that exists is outside God's love in all their holy glory. So then did the church too, born in Paul's confusion. Lust was a power they sought to control, but could not, so they stole it for a time from nuns and monks, and made little fake temples they called monasteries and nunneries, but which were not true temples, for their purpose was to possess the lust, to transmute and transform it and own its generative and creative powers, thus changed to the 
benefit of the church itself. Without the captured primal passions of the religious, the church had no moral heart. The primal hunger of life to begat life was given no room for its natural expression, and in the end this coerced celibacy could not defeat the holy and sacred nature of lust for life. Yet by the church's capture was so deformed and transmuted it became in some a true source of evil, masked as love. The church also sought to confine procreation to the marriage bed, but lust was not to be bound or controlled there either. When the spirit needed to incarnate in matter, it came regardless of authorities lost in fear or the need to dominate, which is why men and women came sometimes to fear it, to fear to surrender to it, and begin to make and to name something holy and so powerful a sin. But the old goddess religions knew this power. Even the significance of generation was celebrated in the goddess religions and embraced in it. We moderns think to call the priestesses and priests of the holy arts of lust temple prostitutes and from our warped time and point of view made of lust and raw desire something wrong. When the patriarchs took social control thousands of years ago and manufactured the mon monotheistic religions dominated by male gods, then did maleness through fear of the generative spirit, fear of lust, and of its threefold partnership, male, female, and incarnating child, introduced then all the horrible distortions of human holy sexuality, what we call porn or abortions or contraception or genital mutilation. Oh, the churches tried, the religions tried, the male-dominated priesthood tried, but the primal powers of creation were not theirs to possess, lest to belong to itself, and we can only surrender to it and submit in wonder and in awe, when in freedom the male and the female, through arts of mutual provocation and intoxication, let in the hunger of the incarnating spirit, seeking a body in which to enter into earthly existence, so it can rush earthward headlong from its star toward the stage of life, this world, and the needed company of we billions, so as to dance and sing and play, well, he reminds us gently of this truth of innocence. Lest ye become again as little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. For lust is adult play of the highest sort, a surrender to the world of sensation, which is also part of the creation. We are not made to suffer, to resist the impulses for pleasure and joy. Why else do we sing and dance in the temples and shout and praise? The body is a temple, lent to us by acts of lust. We are all from a father and a mother. We are all from our own star, seemingly hell-bent to enter into earth existence, to enter into the deeps of the body, but being not yet perfect, we descend partial and often lame of soul. The hunger of the spirit for incarnation in the avatar temple of the physical body includes the need to learn to master self, to become something more, so we want to temper lust and hope that at its root it is love, which is a truth surely divinely real, for the divine does not create an error, ever. Even we humans do not err in the sense of sin. We only make the mistakes of the unlearned, the not yet wise. So the lust and the hunger, the joining of male and female and child-to-be, and the generative act of procreation is such a primal power that it cannot be confined by human religious hectoring, which is too much beam and almost no mode at all. The divine mystery knows not rules, so why would it decree we adhere to laws and commandments, enact the patriarchs of the monotheistic religions, decreed a sin in their twisted lust for power and domination over women? jealous of women's power to carry the growing child's temple in their womb and to be naturally a principal source of love for this incarnating spirit child during its whole life. These older men lorded their self-loved pain over women, repressed them for millennia, but the spirit cannot be repressed, cannot be stilled. So today in our age, lust bursts forth its change, its chains and women's will not accept control of their bodies, their temples, 
for their instinct is sure that something holy is at risk and the twisted lusts of men for domination must be fought or all of us, male and female and child, will be ruined and hate the temple of the body will thus be fostered and hate of the independence of the spirit will thus be fostered and the modern world of we billions drowns in the raging seas of karma such that civilizations must fall to make room for the next one. The goddess religions honored the father god, but the godless monotheistic religions dishonored the mother god, thus founding western civilization on a great lie, one so great the lord of dance himself had to come and die on a cross to lead us all toward redemption. The redemption of Eros, the true name of lust and the hunger for unity of the primal power of generation to overcome separation, to help us seek a world made whole and holy once more. Yet why, then, abortion and porn and genital disfigurement and rape and all the other crimes against women? Because the ever and again incarnating spirit, voyaging the ages and times from past to present and into future, this reincarnating spirit going from one physical body avatar to another learns only through strife and struggle, so that in our age we are faced in the most direst of ways with deep questions of moral confusion. The lust and the hunger once managed through social do's and don'ts are now ours alone to discipline, and we will only learn their mastery by trial and error and through the alchemy of ups and downs and choices. We are to be personally responsible for, for what eros, what lust and the hunger, what the generative power of the creation does in our lives. These are our choices, and no religion or any science can deny our freedom to determine and rule them by ourselves. The gravitas of life is ours now to know, a great gift and a mystery dance often only captured in verse and song, an amazing grace for all. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. <laughs>